No problem. There we go. We're good. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the most next most recent current episode of Star Trek Adventures The Expanse, where one day I will come up with a much smoother introduction for this particular uh, series. But that is apparently not this week. Anyways, uh, we, last week, or two weeks ago now, they survived the onslaught of Q-induced enemies. And this week, where are they going next? Captain, I believe you have the log. So every time you stumble on that, do we get momentum? I'm just curious. <laughs> no, no, I, I give myself threat. I give ah, myself threat. No, yeah, no that, that, that's not how it's worked. I'm, uh, I'm, just saying, just, <laughs> okay, I'm not sure enough. why you should get... I'm not sure why you should get an advantage when you fail at things. <laughs> you die okay. first. You die first. Bring it back. Oh, Bring God. it back. Sorry. Oh. I'll shut up. <laughs> Jar date 83836.9. Once again, the Great Library will have to wait. We have taken a more important personal mission. Dr. Sulkin has joined us, and we have just left Deep Space 15. We are en route to the Tokelau Garden Systems to dispense what the doctor believes is a cure to a sickness that has turned the Tokelau against itself. For now, this disease appears to be confined to the system of Florette. But for, <clears throat> but for now, there is something I need to discuss with my senior staff. End log. And apparently that uh, discussion is going to happen over the breakfast table. Uh, which will be in the captain's quarters. And I believe Correct. this is the first time we've actually seen the captain's quarters. So, uh, Captain Bashir, what sort of fun things go on in your quarters? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you'll notice the temperature is quite chilly. But for, you know, pink skins. <laughs> and... Uh... But uh, it's fairly sp uh, sporadically de uh, decorated, nothing too exciting. Um, there is a large table, but there doesn't seem to be anything on it yet. Um, oh, get rid of Sulkin. He's not here. Oh, okay. Sulkin's not. Okay. Fighting yeah, him to our little meeting. Fair enough. <laughs> Are we streaming yet? Uh, yes, yeah, we just started the dinner or breakfast at the captain's table. Okay. Uh, he is actually meditating in his quarters, um, but anywho. Greetings, my friends. Please have a seat. Um, as everybody takes positions around the table, um, I stand at the end, and I take off my comm badge and take off my pips, and I set them on the table. And I reach down and pull out what seems to be a large blue bottle. Um, proceeding to hand out small goblets to each of you. Um, we're going to say that the uh, Alpha Shift isn't starting in a few minutes. Um, but I wanted to get you all together. Um, I pour a fairly decent size of Andorian Ale. Uh, luckily I restocked, um, at Deep Space 15, after some strange incident I heard about. Uh, <laughs> I want to... Sorry, I'm... Oh. <laughs> I'm coking up already. Uh, I wanted to get you all together. Um, I stand at the end of the table and hold up my glass. It has been almost five months now since we have embarked on this mission. The eyes of Starfleet are upon us, and we have had a crazy time. But we as a crew, nay, friends, have stayed together and watched each other's back. From the beginning with the Scorpi to omnipotent, pain-in-the-ass children, we have held the ideals of Starfleet and to each other. And for all of that, I salute you, my crew, and my senior staff. And I hope that this mission continues to be productive and honorable. Salute. So I then um, take the drink, put my goblet down, and hit a comm button. And a group of yeomans basically come in and start lining the table up. Um, 
And as they set the plates down, I sat down. This is Andorian cabbage soup. This is rare red bat. We have a tuber root salad. This for the spicy flavors is stinging centipede. Heart of the Zerbrut from the Arctic plains. And for your without exciting or interesting uh, palates, this is from Earth bacon and scrambled fowl embryos. Egg. I wish you to dine in. And again, thank you for all that you have done. Get to uh, it, folks. <laughs> hey, excuse me, Captain, but you said this was a heart. Yes, it's an Arctic beast from my home world. All of these, except for the strange scrambled embryos and the bacon, uh, are from I've gotten from when I restocked uh, at Deep Space 15. They are all Andor Andorian. I. I see. And for at least it's just going to cut off like a tiny little portion of the heart and just takes like a small bite of it just to be polite. <laughs> and they're trying to hide it, but Captain, you can see there's a very much like a this doesn't taste good look on their face. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting flavor. <laughs> I'm going to stick with old reliable as I fill my plate with bacon and eggs. <laughs> I'm going to take a nice healthy chunk off that heart because you know what? Hadrix is not afraid. Moose goes in for the eggs and uh, bacon. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Argos grabs for... Uh, what was the first thing? Something about a red bat? Ah, yes. Roasted red bat. Hmm. Smells Cajun-y. <laughs> How would you Mr. know what Cajun is? You're from the fringes. Every now and then I get... You know, Ferengi traders sold stuff to us once. Said it was Cajun. It's damn spicy. <laughs> I like to <laughs> imagine Forlisa's plate is filled... But it only has like tiny portions of the Andorian cuisine. And like most of the other people so far, is mostly just the bacon and eggs. <laughs> kind of reminds me of something my uncle Nerix used to make back on New Talax. It kind of has a more gamey taste, but you know, you get used to a thing like that. Yes, but. I don't know. Stuff on Risa was a lot nicer. Okay, everything on Risa is nicer. It's Risa. I mean, I'm not going to argue with you there, but um, at this point in the timeline, McCall, how how well uh, reconstructed is Risa after the Borg sort of ravaged it? Um, I would say that it's probably about 90%. So it's back to accepting tourists again. Okay. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, when I was living there uh, not too long before the Borg ravaged the place. Um, we moved from there um, to one of our colony planets. Uh, Monogus 2. Um, and then I sort of just drew up from there, being a child and seeing the one place you called home for all of your life at that point get, uh, all but destroyed is a hell of a thing to watch. Yeah, the, uh, <clears throat> Centauri and... systems, so the Centauri, uh, Concordium. Took a lot of refugees from that. We were rather lucky. 
and they, you know, you can see them visibly, like, wiping tears from their eyes at the memory. Oh. Anyways, um... Captain, I know you were on the uh, Nighthawk not long before your assignment here onto the Concordia, but um, what was your time on other ships like? What was the Nighthawk uh, your first assignment? Nighthawk was actually my first assignment. Really? I grew up mostly on Andor. I see. I, I mean, was one you... of the first of the children. Uh after the Dr. Bashir had actually cured uh, the disease. I see. I've spent a lot of my time actually growing up in the lab. My mother was a nurse, and I looked at Bashir to be a father-like figure. Hmm. Bashir is an interesting one to have as that sort of figure, but... He was good at what he did. I I wasn't disappointed with my time with the Nighthawk. In <laughs> fact, I it was very eye-opening to another side of Starfleet, but not the one that I wanted. I personally wanted to, as the doctor referred to it, as see the frontier. I <laughs> wanted to explore, be out there, and experience new life and... And that's how I spent my entire life. So getting this position on the Concordia has been a dream. And I don't see myself giving up the chair anytime soon. Good. Hopefully my time here on the Concordia is long as well. And he'll sort of take a small slug of the Andorian nail from his goblet. <laughs> I don't plan on leaving. I, similar to you, Captain, heard about the frontier and everything to learn and decided to kind of jump both feet and head first into that lovely experiment, experience to this lovely, lovely experience. So, Moose, how are, how are you doing? How is this your time gap let's say are you i know it's not been incredibly long since you've come out uh how are things going are you doing well yeah a ship's a ship doesn't matter if it changes to isolinear to bioneural gel packs it's still the same and um yeah, starfleet actually has a temporal reintegration uh, division. Apparently there's been enough accents like this where people are either from the past or the future come back here and they need to be reoriented. So You, you would be quite surprised. I know a little too much about that. But that's <laughs> a story for another time. <laughs> yeah, just playing catch up on all the big events. Uh, apparently um, Kirk was a big thing. I'm just around I think three <laughs> years into their five year mission. Try to play catch you up with all the big Kirk, events. Kirk is a big thing. <laughs> I've been told yeah. to also check out the Enterprise D, and uh, I think it's a science vessel that got lost in the Gamma. No, Delta, Delta Quadrant. Voyager. Yeah, that's anyway, that's the that's the name. Totally Voyager. That's a relatively recent occurrence in the history. Yeah, I'm trying to go from where my time was and slowly proceeding forward. Hmm. Well, there's been a lot that has happened over those many years. Uh, yeah, it's interesting to catching up, seeing new designs. It's also funny to see some old designs stay current. Yeah, so it was the... I'm not sure, it's not from your era, Lieutenant Commander, but the Miranda class starship has seen quite a fair bit of use, even to this day. I'm sure, there's a couple actually still floating around. Most I also know there's a couple of Daedalus classes still in use, mostly for miniature little mobile labs and safe locations. 
be shocking that Dibilis is still flying, but you know, Starfleet seems to has a way have a way of making things go again. Well, the design good, you know, built yeah, tough like, and sturdy. It's like the human saying, you know, what once was old is new again. Or if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I never really understood nor got that one, but you know, if something's you know not broke, I mean, you still try to see if you can get some coax something else out of it. That's the way we did it on the colonies. That's also what refits are for. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious, since you know exploration is relatively new on for me, what is the biggest or furthest away adventure that you guys have done <sighs> anything on this ship <laughs> same <laughs> the old NX classes could barely hit warp 6 yeah how far did you guys explore in on the NX after the Columbia refit and integrating Andorian Tellarite Vulcan tech into the Federation design. Ooh, some hiccups here and there. We didn't make it too far. Uh, kept encountering little pockets of resistance here and there. But we tried to explore as long as we could. I, unfortunately, was recalled by Starfleet to work on the next generation of uh, Columbia class designs built from the ground up instead of just modifying the old NX models. And then shortly after that, I was placed on the Galahad to do warp engine testing on the new 6.5s. These were supposed to be simple in design so we could actually mass produce them. Unfortunately, I'm now here. So something was wrong in the design. <laughs> yeah, the um, we had another engineer, scientist engineer, he was working on the navigational deflector and put it some experimental designs and it how to describe it imagine going forward without moving at all everything else moves around you he somehow broke the warp bubble instead of us being propelled through space we just got propelled through time oh yeah. interesting and hmm. For least it looks like they're having a really hard time wrapping their head around that. Uh, Lagos pipes and... up. Oh, I'm sorry. No, please. Lagos pipes up. Oh, not going anywhere, but moving through time? Uh, sounds like uh, last Tuesday at the eclipse. Yeah. She's getting hammered. Uh, yeah. Hammered seems like uh, sugarcoating it, Ensign. <laughs> uh, yes, uh their doctor was not kind, was very blunt, even for a do Vulcan. Oh, that's what happens when you decide to have the real stuff instead of Synthahol. <sighs> Which reminds me, Captain, is this real? Yes, everything is real. Excellent. And slugs it. <laughs> uh, Captain, you'll notice that uh, Moose hasn't touched the drink at all. <clears throat> Like, he raised up for the toast, but he didn't ever give a drag from it. Okay. <laughs> How about you, Hadrix? How have you been doing? Yeah, just trying to survive. I mean, coming from the Delta Quadrant's one thing, but getting some of the... Stuff around here sometimes is a little more interesting than even the fringes. Just gotta keep pushing along one way, one day at a time, and not have the many voices that decide to come at you yell at you, so. <laughs> well, I think he has us all beat, though, by being the furthest one out. That is true. I think so, yes. Furthest out, yes. Most adventurous, maybe a little here and there, but you gotta remember, most of my time from Delta to um, Beta was kind of boring, honestly. I mean, 
could have been more exciting, but you know, what do you do when you're on transport ships too much? I definitely learned <laughs> a little bit about, um, oh, what is it? It's some of the Earthlings are really into it. Um, Healy, uh, highlight. Sorry, I forget that one all the time. I've heard about that a little bit, but never actually seen it for myself. Not. I mean, it sounds... oh, sorry, Lieutenant. No, just, just gonna say it sounds all new to me. <laughs> well, when your first when your first assignments on a flagship of the Federation like mine was, uh, go a lot of places. Um, we actually found. I actually have to double check with Beverly, but um I believe it was an odd colony planet that uh oddly enough had a mix of both uh Delton and Orion residents on it. And they had uh encountered some kind of problem with the pheromones that both of those species excrete that was uh causing some problems for lack of a better way of putting it um so beverly and i went to work and we actually made uh captain there's a replicator in here right of course um and for at least we'll sort of walk up and go over to the replicator. Um, replicator, if you can, can you uh, replicate uh, for Lisa Project Delta Epsilon 2? Well, this sounds like a good way to get a little bit of momentum. Uh, if you could roll me a control uh, reason plus medicine, and the ship oh, will assist with computers okay. plus medicine. Difficulty one task. Okay. Reason medicine is good. Um, nah, I ain't got no focuses here. <laughs> if someone gets the ship. For Lisa got it. Test. Huzzah. And let's see if the ship helps. Who's got the ship? I'll grab the ship. What, are we, what am I rolling for? Uh, computer's medicine. All right, now you get one momentum. Huzzah. And so, uh, what the replicator replicates is, um, it almost kind of looks like, uh, I'm trying to figure out the best way to describe this. Is basically, if you took, uh, the Forge's, uh, visor and then basically, where he would see out of it is completely covered over with metal and sort of pulls out of the replicator uh, is this. Uh, it's actually something that we created that could um, suppress some of the pheromones that both the colony species could create and it took a long time. But it, it works. And uh, as far as I'm aware, that planet has seen nothing but peace and thriving since. Peace with any Orion is rather remarkable in its own right. <laughs> I should know I'm married to one. Who, just for the sake of you know plot, has come aboard since her, since your detour at Starbase Fifteen, or Deep ah. Space Fifteen. Sirith is here. Excellent. Um, suppose I'll have to introduce you to them at some point, but for now, uh, I believe some of the phrases used might be uh, "let us eat, drink, and be merry" before we have to be to work. 
Yes. Good old work track. Legos <laughs> is already on his fourth bat. <laughs> I mean, outside of being out here, the only other thing I've really done is went to Bajor several times while in school. Not the academy, in university. You just like the planet? Or did you have a... Uh, sort of gives you, like, a wing in that little, like, eyebrow wiggle, like, special someone kind of look? Um... No, Doctor. Um, more the archaeology. Uh, a lot of the ruins there uh, drew the studying, or drew part of my studies in the university. Hmm. You're sounding just like John Luke. Much of an archaeologist you... himself. Actually, I've studied quite a bit of archaeology myself. Have you yourself uh, ever had an orb experience? Um, no, not particularly, but it just I would consider any of my time there that I got to help with the digs uh, an orb experience just because it was so fascinating. Interesting. They are interesting. <laughs> I will say the nice thing about coming to the future is uh, replicated food tastes good. Not that bad. Real stuff's still better. And oh, um, Always. I still have my home on Earth. It was uh, left to uh, an old friend of mine that owed a life debt, and apparently he just stayed there the whole entire time in Axonari. So now I know, he... for your sake, you had some investments, too. <laughs> <laughs> no. You'd be a rich man. <laughs> Part of the land that was turned into a conservation, though, for some of the animals. So if you wandered too far, you might find yourself some wolves. What kind of wolves, Commander? A couple of varieties. Gray wolves, though. I see. Actually, it reminds me of an old story, actually, read about that came from Earth. Uh, do you have any clue of what a uh, a cryptid is, Commander? Mm, no clue. Uh, does the term urban legend help at all? That's a broad term. Cryptids are basically urban legends that are animal based for to make it a little more specific um there was specifically a cryptid from i believe it was a, it was a state in the united states called west virginia um it had the odd name of the wayne county booger cat and uh, further research showed that this thing was actually just a gray wolf, and people didn't know what it was because it hadn't been seen in the area for almost a hundred years. Hmm. So they, they just assumed it was a monster. That's it's quite interesting. interesting. <laughs> well, if you ever want to have an animal drool on you more than a dog, you could see you could come down to my quarters and see Gertie. Is Gertie one of these wolves? No, he's a snow slug. What How is, is uh, a snow slug? How is that going with uh, Zax? <laughs> well, Gertie gave uh, Zax the approval, so all in good hands. Actually, an interesting species, the little snow slugs. They grow dependent on they grow dependent in size on the lack of food they can find depending on what predators in the area. They start off relatively small if they have enough food, but if something bigger starts eating their food supply, they then increase in size to eat the predator. Interesting. 
And then whatever predator species that became is now hunted. And until it's eaten by something bigger, it will stay that size. So as long as you keep it happily fed, it won't get bigger. Gertie was actually a rescue. Neat little thing, though. Loves to drool. Speaking of pets, Ensign, how is your gerbil? Hedgehog. Uh, ah. I'm doing all right. Uh, still getting used to having something else in my quarters. Especially something that is nocturnal. Mm. Uh, right. If you have any pets, make sure to show what they are to Bud. He may think that they're an infestation and then try to deal with them. Note to self, hide the hedgehog. No, you don't have to hide him. Just, just show him the species index that it's a pet. Or he'll just immediately go into hunting mode. Yeah, please don't. Okay, I'll find Bud. <laughs> I'd rather not have my new pet uh, destroyed. Somewhere he's on the Jeffrey's tube. There's a little squeak sound as Bud lets out a little zap. That's what happens when you go to Federation stations. You pick up a fresh set of vol. <laughs> his eyes, <laughs> his optics glow red <laughs> in the dim light of the Jeffrey's tube. You know, those uh, te those haunted teddy bears. Yeah, they're now in your Jeffrey's tubes. <laughs> uh, uh, Captain, you receive a com badge from uh, Commander Bob, uh, Cap Commander of Gamma Shift, who is reporting that his shift is nearly over and you're almost at your at fl the Florette system. <coughs> All right, it looks like we have to uh, break this up again, gentlemen. Thank you. Time to get back to work. And let's see what we can do about the Tokelau. And remember, we have two crew members aboard that uh, this matters a lot to. All right, dismissed. All right, so... Uh, as you all stand up to leave, uh, if you could all roll me a uh, daring plus fitness test, please. Yeah. This will be difficulty one. Yeah. Those or... are two attributes. Or, uh, cool. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, roll me fitness <coughs> plus uh, security, please. Oof. Okay. For what reason? Uh, the ship is about You're to about come to... a lurching halt. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. I thought it was like, I was, I was going to say, like, I didn't drink. Nope. Uh, fitness security? Yeah. Hadrix passes. Yay. So does Ferliza. Hey, uh, uh, focus, focus, full body workout. Yeah. I know how to maintain my core. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> he just scrunches his abs real hard. <laughs> oh. oh, Captain. Oh, Captain. Okay. More? Wasn't uh, quite as bad as the Captain. No. Okay. One. Okay. And I'll quickly roll Legos. Oh. Lego succeeds easily. <clears throat> Meanwhile, let's see what happens to the poor captain. Oof. So, as you are all standing up to leave, uh, the ship comes to a lurching halt. Um, and I'm going to, because I find it amusing, I'm going to spend one threat to reroll those two zeros. Why not dump threat early on? Okay. Uh, the captain, uh, you stumble badly and are thrown into the side wall, uh, crack your head, and you fall unconscious. So, yeah. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> blue, uh, blue, uh, blue blood begins to uh, uh, stem from one of the captain's ears. And out, and given the um, orientation of his head, a little bit of uh, clear fluid comes out of his antennae, one of his antennae, as the captain falls unconscious. Uh, Ensign Moore, I believe. Yep. Now, uh, you did not get a complication, so you only get... Uh, two Dang. points of stress as you, uh, try to... 
you instinctively reach out and grab something, but it's not quite enough and you end up wrenching your shoulder. You know, so you take two stress. Two stress as I slide to the floor. Yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, the ship immediately goes to red alert uh, oh, in response good. to this. And Cap or Commander Bob says, all senior staff, please report to the bridge. Good. Girl. All right. Doc, uh, can you, can, can you... I'm going to, yeah, I'll, I'll patch up the captain. I'll make sure he's up there as soon as he can be. Patrick, I'm going to engineering. Is it more you good enough to get head up? Be fine. My shoulder's seen better days as I stand up with holding my good arm against my bad shoulder and follow you up to the bridge. Lagos, why don't you help the ensign? Uh, of course, sir. And Lagos ba uh, comes up, slings his uh, big beefy arm around your slender frame and basically props you up against him. Oh, I was figuring fireman's carry. <laughs> <laughs> Only for that's, unconscious. That's a, that's, Only, a way, that's, that's a way to get on the little bridge. Only if they're unconscious, sir. And, or give permission beforehand. <laughs> and I but, mean... Uh, later. <laughs> <laughs> and that was in character. Of course. So was that. Um, okay. Mm. Uh, and our Lieutenant Commander Reinhardt is heading down to the engineering uh we're going to quickly go to the bridge where a bunch of people are who they should are where they shouldn't be that looks about right uh commander hadrix as you open the turbo lift door you can see gamma shift is already ready to leave uh, despite the fact that these ships at red alert they're more interested in getting some sack time. Uh, Commander Bob, who is basically as exciting an officer as his name implies, uh, stands up. Commander, we were we are approximately t one parsec out of the outer limits of the floret system when we just the ship just sort of decided it was ah sorry sir <clears throat> it had decided that. It was no longer safe to approach at warp and engaged emergency uh, thrust or engaged emergency uh, halt protocols, sir. That's a little odd for a baseline planet. Um, Ensign, can you run some scans of the area? Uh, Aye, sir. This is going to be your favorite role, Ensign. Uh, this is going to be a uh, insight plus science, and the ship will assist with sensor science. This is going to be a difficulty of three. Oh, yay. Well, there's one for the ship. Yep. Concordia assists. Well, I have technical expertise, so we have a reroll. Um, I'm also going to do the momentum for a third die because I have cautious. Yeah. All right. And since our operations is a focus. Well, well, that's, that's a reroll. Aw. I have technical expertise, and I activated cautious. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm just speaking from the GM's perspective here. <laughs> but cautious, I, wanna I wonder why you, you would guys. do that. That's why he said aw, because you're going to yeah. get rid of that. <laughs> uh, that would be a four successes, so you get that one momentum right back. Alrighty. Okay, so you notice several things about this system. Uh, let's just jump straight to the system, which is down here somewhere. There it is. Sir, it's coming up on screen. Oh, I forgot to add one asset piece to that. Oops, too late now. Okay. So, what you notice about the system is that it is a mess. Uh, so, several things. Well, starting at the center... There is a uh, red supergiant star and a small white or a small blue dwarf uh, sun operating as a binary system. Uh, there's no real pl solid planets of note because there are, for some reason, three gas giants the size of Jupiter or plus in that seem to have taken 
well, it's created enough gravity wells to prevent any mass from becoming planet-sized. Anything large enough, it has collect they've collected into their own highly unstable orbits as their moon. Uh, you are also noticing the reason that the ship uh, decided to drop out of a uh, orbit or drop out of warp was that the solar system's mass is insane. Uh, there is very little in the way of actual empty space because the whole system is sort of like soup-like. Uh, you, do you guys remember what a fluidic space looked like from the Voyager series? Mm -hmm. You know, with oh, yeah. uh, icky, greenish, brown fluid sloshing about um, like a toddler's diaper. Yeah, it I was, was about to say, let's not talk about after my chili the other week. <laughs> it's very similar to that, except it's not fluid. It is uh, spores. Uh, specifically, spores of that of a togalau. Uh, or uh, all togalau, I should say. They have uh, multiplied to the point where this solar system is more of a dense atmosphere instead of actual void. And the ship decided that it was not safe to proceed at warp and has brought you all to a very shuddering halt. And while you process this, we're going to cut to sickbay. Where the captain, let's see, uh, let's see, more not here. Uh, for Lisa, you bring in the captain on a gravity lift, or a gravity gurney. I have the captain's token here somewhere. Why do I have so many character sheets? This isn't even Cerber Station. Uh. <laughs> there, characters, captain. You bring him in and find Dr. Quith already in a deep philosophical conversation with Dr. Solkin, who has all, and uh, they have both taken up space in your office. The conversation stops as soon as you enter with the captain. Gentlemen, uh, Lieutenant Krim. Just need to take care of the captain real quick. And she already passes you a medical tricorder. Excellent. All right. Um, so, Dare, uh, insight plus medicine, please. Uh, yeah. Because you're in sick bay, this will be a zero challenge test. Yeah. Cool. cool. <clears throat> I don't need no extra dice. Well, you get two successes, so two momentum. Huzzah! Yeah, so it's pretty much what you su ex ah, what you suspected—a hairline fracture along the uh, cranial ridge, up along the <laughs> side of, just around the, uh, between the, uh, his left ear and his left antennae. Nothing too major. Small, uh, you know, couple, a few minutes with a. Uh, bone re-knitter and a, a deconcussionator should be sufficient to get him back on his feet again. Although, Excellent. although it's probably best that he avoid any uh, strenuous tasks for the first for the next couple days. All right, I will start the process of patching him up. <laughs> okay. Uh, roll me. I shall a... call it the decussionator. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm sure there's a better term for it, but I like decussionator. So, uh, roll me a control medicine, please. Yep. Difficulty one. Hmm. And you should be at three momentum now. Yeah. Um. Emergency medicine or surgery? Question mark. <laughs> I think either of these count for that. Alright. Vote cool. for emergency medicine. <laughs> oh, Captain, you're not. Oh, quit being a baby. <laughs> ha. Okay, there's uh, three moment or three successes, so two momentum. Captain Bashir, you uh, were having the most wonderful dream. You were back in uh and you're back in Andor. Uh your two uh the two uh 
la, the Shen and the Zhen that, you know, you had crushes on were there. You were all rather scantily clad watching the uh, sun, watching the planet rise. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you see um, Dr. Ferliza's smiling face and the blaring bright lights of sickbay. Mm. Think you could put me back under, Doc? No, because you have things to do. Although I would recommend not doing anything strenuous for the couple, next couple of days. You did suffer a hairline fracture in your cranial ridge and a minor concussion. I see. You're fine. May I report to the bridge? Yes, just uh, try not and think too hard. Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> On the bridge, more just breaks out in laughter randomly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you people. Okay. Well, that's happening down in... Doctors. Ancient... Doctor. 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 <laughs> <laughs> As you, as the captain heads out, Doctor Sulkin heads over and passes a pad of quote the cure uh, to Doctor Ferliza, and what follows will be a very heated argument that will be fun in character, but not right away. Uh, because and I take it this is just for sake of my out of character yeah. stuff. This this is my first time reading this. Yes, is when he hands me. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, um, and now down in engineering. Ah, Lieutenant Commander Reinhardt, a.k.a. Moose, uh, you burst in. All of your technicians are busy uh, performing the going down the checklist of sudden engines or sudden warp engine bubble failure and performing all the checklists as you have trained them to do. Uh, yeah, Zach. she stopped. <laughs> yeah, I could feel that. Any structural damage, micro fractures, anything like that? Nothing like that. She just kind of turned off. Alright. I don't like a sudden stop like that. Anything wrong with the warp core housing? Well, it seems the blue has turned to red, and the red to blue, and I... Yep, it stopped. Okay. Uh, uh, Kelso's mad, the, uh, uh, the the male Nalu engineer on assignment, uh, poke pipes up from his terminal. Uh, Lieutenant Commander, the part of... The particle count is signif will present a significant shear against our, shi our ship moving through this sector of space. It will be more like swimming than you know, flying. The Nalu have specific uh, shield ge geometries that we have for our entry and exit from our planetary, bo from our planetary water bodies. Uh, if I may suggest a similar shield geometry. Get it done, transmit it up to the bridge and have them look over it and then make sure it's adjusted. Hmm. Yes, my uh, dead fish guy. I told you it stopped. <laughs> Betty, is there any configurations we can do to the Versard collectors that uh, will help protect them against this dense atmosphere we're moving through? Or this dense space? Analyzing. Recommend shutting off Boussard collectors until further notice. All right. Well, you heard Betty, guys. Let's turn it off. Moose to bridge. Ha uh, Commander Hadrick? Kill you. Yes. Yes, Moose. What can I do for you? Uh, we're doing a couple of things here in engineering, but with the density out there, we can't really rely on uh, the warp core for too long. We can't go to warp. The Bussard collectors won't accept any of the matter. We can gunk it up. Hmm. This sounds kind of familiar. I'll have to think about it. Can't remember what it is, but can we run on impulse? Yeah, we can use the fusion reactors. I do recommend we bring down the warp core. I want to make sure the articulation frame's intact. A sudden stop like that can always lead to microfractures. We'll proceed as you suggest. Um, one quarter impulse, okay? Should be good. If we start getting any massive vibrations or shears, go even slower. 
Will do, Lieutenant Commander. All right, Zach, prepare to shut down the warp core. Hey, Captain. Okay. Uh, Zach, if you could do me... Uh, or Moose, either one. Uh, do me a control plus engineering, please. And the ship... Oh, I gave, I gave the command to Zach. Yeah, so Zach, uh, if you could give me a control plus engineering, please. And the ship will assist with... Uh, engines plus engineering. Difficulty of two. It's the big red button, right? I think. <clears throat> or is that the blue one? <laughs> Hold on, let's see here. <laughs> We're just giving the, all the captain's characters a run for their money this week. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's one from the captain. Uh, let's see what the ship does. <clears throat> Who's got the ship? Oh, I still got this ship up. I'm sorry. I'm right. um, engines en engineering. Just engineering. There we go. Okay. Uh, you successfully power off the engine and begin a search for microfractures and checking the articulation core or the articulation, whatever it was. Uh, GM has lost his ability to techno babble tonight. And that's why I surround myself with smart players. Who's these smart players? <laughs> I'll, let you know. say, where? I'll let you know when I find them. Okay. Uh, speaking of at least finding smart players, let's go back to the bridge. So, uh, Commander Hadrix, um, you feel a subtle um, ceasing of vibrations as the warp core goes offline. There's a lovely external shot of the USS Concordia as their, their, the blue glow of their nacelles powers off. Mm, alrighty. Well, let's head to the main planet. Primrose, um, lead the way. One quarter impulse, please. Mm -hmm. Alright, and I am going to require a control plus con test from Primrose. The ship will assist with structure plus engineering, and this is going to be a difficulty of three. What, can't make it easy on us tonight? Nah. Okay. All right, there's one from shrimp. Oh, okay. Yeah, from sheep. From sheep. Bad. I heard shrimp, so. <laughs> uh, I've been going too easy on you for the last few episodes. I want to make something a little more interesting. Primrose, would you like a, a momentum? Uh, the Dr. Furliza. Oh, there he is. Hello, Furliza. I am here. All right. Yeah. Sure. Control con. All right, con. Do, do, do. Control con. Uh, any of her focuses apply here? Um, what? Hazard so, avoidance. Helm, helm operations. <laughs> uh, hazard avoidance will work. Okay. Control con. And I'm the primary person on this task, you right? Yep. Um, does this have to do with environmental difficulty? Yes, it does. Then it is reduced by one because of her talent pushed the limits. Wonderful. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay, there's the three successes you need. Uh, I'll put it back. Uh, Primrose, as you begin to push your uh, the ship forward into the soup, <coughs> um, there's a you notice that a, a or you notice that the shield geometry that has been uploaded from uh, engineering is doing a good job of diverting a significant amount of force that would be, I that would either be pushing against the ship in the first place. However, there is still a significant push against the shield in all directions, uh, requiring you to push more power into the ship uh, to make much headway. Uh, so until you guys get out of the soup or, you know, figure out what the soup is and how to, you know, make it more cooperative, power management's going to be a thing. Uh, so the ship is currently losing one power. So do seeing this, can I... Uh, start diverting power away from non-essential non systems? 
you can uh, yes you can do this as a sort of like a restore power kind of talent task uh, but you can only do this once per scene all right before I do do it more will chirp up commander yes ensign uh, we are starting to, to lose quite a bit of power I would suggest we start uh, diverting power from non-essential systems and uh, if it gets to it, start evacuating people to divert power off non-essential floors. In other words, be able to kind of confine you confine people to be able to lessen life support. Not a gr not a bad idea at all. As long as we can keep the seat warmers. <laughs> okay, I, so okay, he, okay, he really did not say the last part. No, no it's, <laughs> sorry. Nope, just... that's canon now. You said no, down. that's canon. <laughs> Of course. I mean, come on. The ships are cold. Of course there's going to be seat warmer. It's a it's a ship run by an Andorian captain. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> yes, there's seat warmers. We have warmer. seat warmers. <laughs> Speaking of Andorian captains, uh, Captain Bashir, you picked this time to come back on the bridge. Did you turn on my seat warmer? <laughs> captain, of course not. Good. Status report. Well, we've entered the system, but the ship decided to um, stop us abruptly because it detected a excessive buildup of um, particle matter within the system and deemed it unsafe for warp travel. So we're starting to go in at one quarter impulse based on Moose's recommendations. Yeah, I can tell something was a pain in my antenna. Just a little <sighs> bit. I've, I've never seen the clear goo from an antenna before. It's kind of new for me, just to be completely honest, Captain. Uh, remind me to tell you the story of when it got it cut off. Oh, my. <sighs> anyway. So, I said I'll look at the screen. Uh, are we at the... Um, you are Togalau homeworld? I mean, we made it to the system. Uh, the system has kind of become the homeworld. Yeah. Ah. Which is Florette? That's not. Uh, Florette is the system classification. It's broken down to Florette 1, 2, and 3, indicating the gas giants in particular. Uh, Dr. Sulkin's notes indicate that the quote unquote cure should be dispersed at uh Florette one. AKA the one that is currently closest to the suns and it's not quite close enough to be called a hot Jupiter, but it's close. Right. Primrose, take us in. Shields up. Keep an eye on the heat. As we head as closest to possible, and prepare the probes. Of course, Captain. Mm. Okay, so there is now going to be a discussion in sick bay over the cure. While the ship begins moving slowly but steadily, uh, Ferliza, Doctor Quiff, and Sulkin have begun looking over Doctor Sulkin's quote-unquote, cure for the Togolau. Uh, Dr. Quiff is quite fascinated that uh, Dr. Sulkin has apparently become quite the uh, master at astro astromycology. Ecology. If you ask me, Doctor, this seems like more of a pesticide than a cure I did not ask you but well you're on my ship in my sick bay so you're going to hear from me if you would have a garden would you not cut out the weeds but what you're suggesting would kill some of them that were flowers as it were I have been I working on 
From what Go I on, can Doug. tell, this seems not like, unlike diseases that your own kind has encountered. Such as, uh, similar to Panar Syndrome or Bendy Syndrome. Imagine that the Federation had come up with a cure for that disease. Only that it would kill a ton of people who weren't sick at all. That's what Only... you're suggesting we do to the Toga Lao. I am not suggesting anything. This has been the, the this is the answer. Only 25% of the spores will die, saving over 75%. I have worked four months on this. The bacteria acts like a rabid animal. And not to mention, doctor, the spores themselves are not sentient until they group together. But they are still life, Doctor. If I may quote my teachings, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. Fucking Falcons. Do we know how many Spores exist in Toglau? Uh, I or mean, do, do we have it? Not I, not an exact number. Do we? This is me out of character. Yeah. Do uh, we have like a rough estimate rather than an exact number? Well, actually, I thought to you in character, the total spores will only be down ten point five percent, leaving the rest to flourish. Yeah. And you know, keep in mind that there are other Toglau systems full of healthy Toglau. Sure. Yeah. Not trying to sway your opinion one way or the other. Just... Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> you really we think are... four months was enough time? If we do not act soon, this garden will be completely eliminated. If you, think you, can... <laughs> if you think you can... If you think you can do better, Doctor... I would be happy to look at it, but we do not have time. I have your more time than you think. Um, Dr. Quith, you have more experience with um, species than the Expanse, I'm sure by several more decades than we in the Federation do. Um, if I would like to remind the doctor, we, as Starfleet, is our fault that the Togalau has become the sentiment. Uh, I must uh, fall, uh, place my support behind Dr. Sulkin in this, uh, Dr. Feliza, with my apologies, of course. Until the, until they became sentient and started communicating. We honestly thought that they were some form of naturally occurring plank uh, species, not a, not unlike or not dissimilar to that of plankton, or a spore like of plankton. And in fact, several uh, sp several species were, especially the uh, Kasala, were known to harvest the, these systems for food during their refugee pilgrimages. Now There's that... some other. There has to be some other way that we can do this without killing them. I mean, like we said, if we can cross-reference, I mean, some cases of Bendy syndrome or even Pinar syndrome, I think would be a better comparison. There has to be something we can come up with that's a cure that doesn't kill any of them, or at least far fewer. We can do better i look forward to assisting you in any way i can doctor doctors thank you okay now if you kindly would dr sulkin 
while I'm working on this, get the hell out of my sick bay. As you wish. I will be in my quarters. Uh, and Dr. Quiff leaves, or Dr. Sulkin leaves. <laughs> Dr. Quiff looks up. I've read about Vulcans, but I'm, this, I must admit, this is my first time actually interacting with one. Are they all this cold? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Understandable. Very well. Um, they <laughs> go through a process known as the, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Gate Jumper, uh, the Kolinar that purges them of all emotion. Correct. It is the Kolinar. Okay. And that's his, his, his thing is completely, yeah, that was, that was the character is, yeah. yeah. He is all prophecy and the, the laws of, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm... Yeah. He has no emotion. There. Seems like my ex. <laughs> you just hear crew, you just hear crew oh, in the shit. background. <laughs> wow, throwing shade from ten oh. decks up. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I will assist if any way I can, but I must say that his re his research has appears very thorough. Now, uh, it would have pre. Now, if you could please pass or send to my console the. Uh, the RNA sequences from both uh, Togi and um, die, I'm forgetting one on Primrose. Primrose. Togi and Primrose. I'll see if I can't cross-reference it to um, anything that's currently going on outside. Of course, and while we're here and uh, they will also send quick information on both uh, Pinar Syndrome and Bendy Syndrome. Uh, for those unaware, uh, Pinar syndrome is a, syn a syndrome that occurs, I believe, strictly in Vulcans uh, that essentially breaks down the synaptic pathways in their brain. And uh, Bendy syndrome is sort of similar to what's going on with the Togalal, where essentially their emotional state is sort of breaking down and makes them have more fits of anger and uh, can even cause emotional transference to other people. I believe there was an episode of TNG about that, so that's fun. Yes. Ah, Vulcans. Okay. So, we are going to cut back to the bridge. And if I could please ask uh, someone to take, uh, pick up Legos, please. And, uh, Legos, if you could please do a Daring Plus security test, and the ship will assist with, um, Structure Plus security. This is going to be difficulty three. I can do Legos. Okay. And this is going to be a scene change, so you lose one momentum. Ship's still like you're going to be doing up. Legos later. <laughs> Lego my Legos. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, well, he has cautious security already, so we have to figure out an activation for him. Mm -hmm. um, what am I rolling? Uh, daring. Da daring security, please. Daring security. Does he have a focus? Um, does he? Uh, defensive systems, shield systems, something like that? His tactical systems, teamwork, weapon proficiency. Mm. Uh, not quite what I'm looking for, I'm afraid. Focus and defense systems. Anybody against that? <laughs> I mean, I'm not hearing a no. Okay. So now he has a focus and defense systems. Okay. If I so can spell. You now have a proper focus. Alrighty. I'm going to use a momentum for a third day since we have cautious. All right. Well, there's the three successes you need. Eh, let's do let let's re-roll a zero mm -hmm. because I can. Fair. Okay, four successes. Yeah, so one, one momentum, momentum, one momentum right back. Uh, the ship 
is buffeted um, as if a strong current takes it from the port side and tries to shift it nastily off kilter. Uh, however, uh, Lagos, your fantastic work with uh, sensing or seeing the initial stage of the problems and immediately reconfiguring the shields on the fly uh, causes the uh, surge to be uh, far less dramatic than it actually is. Everyone just takes two steps to the left instead of being thrown, you know, that sort of way. Cha-cha real smooth, yep. yeah. Uh, your ship loses uh, another power from the, you know. What is what are we supposed? To, we were at full, were we at full? Uh, you were at full. You've now lost uh, two by my definite by my. So we are at now at eight. Yep. The sheet said six, and I was very confused. Oh, that was probably the last time we actually took it in combat. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So that's why I wanted to double check. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Lagos will just say, sorry, Captain, The we hit a current. I was able to correct it. Miter bumps. Uh, engineering, you're seeing a s extra power being drained, or extra power strain on the shield systems, but currently compensating for it because the children don't need their um, time in the uh, learning centers at the moment. Those have now been shut off. As Ensign Moore is frantically trying to reroute power. So, uh, Ensign Moore, or or if someone wants to pick up and activate Nyx, they can do that too. Um, I need a uh, Insight Engineering, please. And the ship will assist, if you want the ship to assist, because that will start costing power. If you want the ship to assist, it will be um, uh, Communications plus Engineering. So, my Insight Engineering is a 13 as Moore... Uh, Moore can, or Moose can do this from engineering too if he wants um, because he's busy keeping track of things I imagine I'm inside the articulation for right now scanning it fair enough where is Nix's sheet um, she had a weird it uh, should be under engineering and yeah. uh, oh, support characters Nix first yeah I mean, she's hitting a 14 and has a focus in communication systems. Yep. So I'm thinking she's probably the better bet. Fair enough. Uh, do you want the ship to assist or not? Mm, what are your guys' thoughts? I'm I'm fine with her leading it. This will be a difficulty two test. You can shoot uh, use the 14. ship. Use the ship for this one? Use the ship. All right. We'll use the ship. All right. So you... And that was com... Commu which... Uh, uh, communications plus engineering. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. And the ship on its game again. Oh, wow. Uh, delivered. Oh, nice. Four successes. One power loss. Two uh, momentum. Yep. Uh, Nix from the... What was at first you thought was, or you didn't speak up until you got closer because you weren't entirely sure it was it wasn't part of the binary star's radiation pulses, uh, but you're picking up what appears to be a repeating pattern on the on short range uh, communication frequencies. It's horrendously noisy, but you are now pretty sure there's a communication coming from somewhere closer to the sun. Captain Commander, I'm picking up what's looking like uh, communication waves. Can you narrow that down? I mean, you, uh, you've succeeded so well that, yes, you are able to clean it up a bit. Thank it's, you. It is audio, but yes. It seems like it's audio only. I'll patch through what I got. Thank you. I will hit the button. Uh, heavily static, um, as if, uh, ah. uh, heavily static still, but they get enough through. Agro colony Zeta five, close to his sun. Radiation, help. And that's the same message on repeat. Oh boy. 
Agro Colony Culture One. Do we have any record of anyone else out here? Anyone? <laughs> the commander would try to look it up real quick on his console. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's do A. Uh, probably command would work fine for this. Um, insight plus command. Uh, difficulty of difficulty of five. Uh, difficulty of four, because it is fairly uh, obscure. Uh, if you want the ship to assist, uh, that would be a computers plus command, or computers plus con. Either one. It's one of those weird or, ones. Or does anybody have a problem using three momentum for two extra dice? I'd rather use the momentum. Yeah, because we're at seven power right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think any of my focuses will work. So, uh, What focuses do you have? Composure, linguistics, combat tactics, warp and fusion, warp drive fusion reactors, Nalu relations, and Indian culture cooking. Nope, I'm afraid none of those work. Actually, I like no, of for cooking. Nalu, Nalu relations will actually work in this instance. Oh, okay, we're re-rolling. Uh, well, hang on. You've oh, just oh wait, well, yeah, so... yep, yeah, you're right. Uh, nope, neither of those would have been Damn. crits. Yeah, you're right. Uh, well. Um, wait, are you saying that my goof... What? Never mind. My, my, um, <laughs> Nalu relations, y'all. Yeah. Uh, afraid not, though. Uh your computer uh, your computer's reporting that there are no known um, no known uh, other species out here captain i got no notice about any other colonies races settlements out in this area all right the probe can wait take us in as close as you can primrose to where that signal is coming from Okay, so, uh, Primrose, you can do this two ways. One, uh, this will be a bit more drain on power, but it will be safer, is uh, two control plus con tests. Or you can do one daring plus con to do a uh, just a full bur uh, r uh, a burst at full impulse that will get you to the coordinates faster. And it would drain less power, but at the same time, it's a more difficult test. I mean, she's got her set. Prim yeah, Primrose her... is kind of built for the more dangerous stuff, almost. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go the daring con thing. Daring con. So this is going to be typically a difficulty four test, but because of your, um, you know, various talents, it's going to be a difficulty three. Augmentations. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. Difficulty will or daring plus con. If you want the ship to assist, it will be uh, engines plus con. Okay, and so this called difficulty three. Okay. Um, would you like the ship? And I'm going to spend. Would some... this would this also require precise maneuvering? No, not in this instance. I'm afraid. Damn. Okay. Yeah. And <laughs> I I'm, tried. I'm going to spend some threat to increase the complication range eighteen to twenty. Okay. Um. Ugh. I. I'm going to go and head and say, I actually don't think I need help from the ship. Okay. okay um, because down. I'm going to, I'm going to pop a determination for her first value. Ah, woohoo. Uh, what's her uh, value? Nobody beats me in space. <laughs> okay. <laughs> roads. Well, we're not where we're going. We don't, we don't need, need roads. roads. <laughs> <laughs> um, because then it's already two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I th yeah, I think I'm okay. All right. Well, that's the three I needed. That's the three you needed. That's right. Uh, and and that's that zero bummer. is not a complication. So bummer. Oh well. <laughs> uh, so uh, a burst at full impulse. Uh, have you ever been on like a speedboat that just sort of jumps from idle to full power? It, no, but I've been on the top thrill dragster at Cedar Point, so I assume it's an it's a something. same kind of feeling. Yeah, yeah. There's an initial resistance as the ship tries to push against the angry Togalau soup, 
uh, and all of a sudden it just you reach the magic threshold where the ship gets or gets on plane and just takes off through it everyone else is sitting down uh, moose you're in your um, articulation matrix and you are slung about something fierce but I'm hoping you have fall protection on well considering I'm inside the warp core yeah mm. no mm. <laughs> Well, just for some fun, then uh, roll me a daring plus fitness. No, pff, nope, there I go again. Uh, roll me daring plus security. Difficulty of two. Full body workout? Sure. <laughs> oh, just a one. Just a one. Uh, Zax, you hear something large thump around in the warp core. Um, I'm not sure if Moose is the type to swear. And if he's surprised, um, you just hear a large sigh, like a big, heavy sigh. Uh, You'll get on there. I got a real good look at the bottom of the terium injector. Needs some cleaning. You don't take any damage, get. thankfully. Just a couple Woo. bumps. Get on that. We should probably look at handrails. Just saying. No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. It's where I want to be anyways. <laughs> so, so after that uh, daring maneuver, uh, you find yourselves not there. There. Uh, you guys find yourselves uh, staring down the bullet or the gullet of the uh, dual suns. Hang on, um, I'm going to actually put the other one in here so that we have a reference. Uh, there we go, a blue dwarf. To, to ask Ooh. a question, that would yes. be a TNG quote. Are we fully engulfed in the corona? <laughs> of uh, the red one here? Not yet. <laughs> not yet, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Wait, the USS... You... Oh, sorry. I was going to say, no, you're not in Michigan. You're not fully engulfed in the corona. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm in, I'm in Ohio. I'm, yeah, I'm in Ohio. I'm pretty close, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh, boy. I was going to say, Indiana here is uh, getting right up there. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you guys don't even wear a mask anymore. That's freaking nuts. All right. Anyways. <laughs> uh, let's, I mean, we're depre it's depressing enough, you know, that you're, you know, beating my story easily. But despite... hey, I'm not de I'm not pressing any buttons yet. Oh, no, I <laughs> be pressing buttons. <laughs> okay, so uh, the USS Concordia comes or tracks the source of the communication uh, to a. At first glance, it would not be much different than a any of the other giant pieces of space rock being flung around this system like an a, like an extra galactic or an intergalactic pinball game. Uh, this one, however, is seems to be on a tra trajectory towards the sun, towards the suns. Um, and as you get closer, the communication clears up. On screen? Mm -hmm. No, still audio. Or is it still only. audio only? Uh, still okay. audio only, I'm afraid. Okay. Play. Um, <laughs> one second, while I get the proper characters here. There we go. This is Quinar Quinar Lee. Quinar Lay of the Kisala Agra Moon Agra Colony One. We have been flung off course by the gravity, and our foods and the food source is not helping in any way, shape, or form. Requesting assistance if anyone hears us. Ensign, can you get a tractor beam on that rock? Considering that rock is roughly the size of, uh, probably the size of a Voth ship. You know, it's still not small by any means, but you're welcome to try. Yeah, well. Uh, tractor beam test. Uh, Le Mr. Legos. Uh, this will be a control plus security. Uh, if you want Number. the ship to assist, this will be a wep uh, weapons plus security. And basically, however many successes you get is how strong the tractor beam is.
Commander, what do you think she meant by the food is gone bad? The only thing I can think of is maybe some source of their sustenance is contaminated. Not to yeah. seem too, too overly precise about it, but yeah. Primrose, question. Yes. Does Captain. any of your gardens consist of... Does anyone eat you? <laughs> That's a personal question. McCall, does anyone eat the Togalau? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, before you gained proper sentience, uh, the Togalau was aware that it was maybe on a hab- instinctual level, probably, mm-hmm. that... Several species did uh, come to them f- uh, to harvest food, uh, most notably the Kasala. Ah. Um, but at some points in the past, most of the species that ha- traveled through this way found their abundant s- sources of fungal uh, spores to at least, well, maybe not, you know, a one star meal. It at least contains several, you know, you are full of nutrients. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, the Kasa and Primrose just sort of <laughs> falls silent and turns around. <laughs> Most of this did stop once uh, the Togalau, you know, actually gained the ability to communicate with. Um, so I'm not, you know, calling them terrible people for eating you once you've become sentient, but, you know. Oh, yeah. No, I get that. Yeah, yeah. It was more. It wasn't like anger. It was more of like, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. I.e. Primrose got the same idea that I got after I brought it up. <laughs> oh. Anyways, uh, so uh, who's rolling the tractor beam? Uh, I believe that was our Lieutenant Lagos. I, I think we have more controlling them at the moment. Uh, yeah, I'll do it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so weapons security for Legos. Oh, not weapons. De- control security and weapons security from the ship. And oh shit! Ah, there's a failure. Okay. All right. Well, we're gonna do our cautious security on Legos so that we have a chance. Okay. Um, weapons proficiency, since technically yep. it's a weapon. I'll let that go, yep. Wow. Uh, so four successes and a complication. Cool. If only I could re-roll the ship with cautious. Nah, afraid not. I mean, you could try re-rolling one of those ones and hope for a crit, but... Um, let's not crit fish. Okay. That's a cool phrase. I like that. I'm going to keep that. Anyways, <laughs> and I will forget it by the end of the session. So. What, crit fish? Yeah. I've never okay. heard of that phrase before. Cool. Anyways, uh, Lieutenant Lagos, you are you engage the tractor beam at its maximum power. Um, however, the tractor emitter doesn't or is heavily dispersed with the amount of crap in the way. And the radiation that is being emanated from the uh, dual from the dual stars, you suspect that it's not going to hold long, and it's not. It might buy you an extra few minutes when it counts, but it's going to burn out soon. Okay. So can. Oh, what's the best way to do this? Um. I should also mention that the ship. Um loses two power because the crit or because of the fail so we're now at five mm-hmm. all right can we uh take our uh runabout over and try to pull them up i don't know if transporting will work within the radiation we're having right now uh if we take the shuttle over and try to pick them up and bring them on board before they fall. We are why we still are can hold them in the place. Can we track them into just a docking clamp and 
attach ourselves it's, to him? It's a big rock. We could try. Ah, using the ship's uh, modular docking. Well, that's a thing. Good. It's a good attempt. Huh. Good idea, Ensign. Let's give it a shot. Okay. So oh, yeah. We... we forgot to talk about changing that. Oh, well. <laughs> the, the thing at the top of the ship. Oh, well. Yeah. Eh. Your time has come. You had a time to decide whether or not to change the module out, and you chose silence, so I assumed that as, you know, consent. I enjoy the fact that the tower for shows a burger. I mean, you know. <laughs> lunar colonies come in, like, three different flavors on the internet. <laughs> it's accurate. Yeah, okay, so. So what, if I understand so correctly, you guys are going to deploy the lower section of the ship and into its docking bay mode in an attempt to land the ship. Well, this is going to be fun. Wait a second. We're trying to save Plankton from a giant floating burger. <laughs> this has SpongeBob written all over it. <laughs> Joke's on us. We're Plankton. We call SpongeBob fan <laughs> back right <laughs> now. <laughs> Quick, uh, where's uh, the Nalu that I have dressed up as Mr. Krabs? Um, oh, God. <laughs> well, I have I have Dr. Sulkin as Squidward. Um, I have oh, yes. SpongeBob. Um, yeah. yeah for, uh, okay, so scratch this. We are now, uh, this is now a holodeck adventure. Um, <laughs> okay. This is actually another Lower Decks episode. <laughs> just put the oh, staff and SpongeBob, my boy. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so while the players play this out of their system, I think that we're going to take a break. Uh, so... yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. That was totally my fault. I'm ready. But... I'm ready. Uh, let's be back want... in about uh, quarter two. I want two. it. I want it. Uh, let's be back quarter in quarter two, two, two guys. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh. Roger that. And we are back. Uh, hopefully we have been memed out. And you guys are now orbiting the colony. And I believe you guys were going to try to land the ship by imp basically trying to dock with it using your dry dock clause. Is that my understanding? I believe that's what we talked about, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um... So, uh, Moose, while you're in engineering, you get the most interesting of calls, is that the starship, or that the uh, starship is going to be going into dry dock mode, and all engineering staff are prepared to receive the quote damaged ship. Vux, just I. Have Bud go help them with the repairs. We'll focus ourselves on uh, checking this frame out. Work over. We're almost done anyways. Bud! Get to it! Bud bobs up and down. D detects that there's no vermin to be um, punched. And bobs off to wherever he needs to go. So, this is going to be a... Control plus contest, and the ship will assist with structure plus engineering. Um, this is going to be a difficulty of three. But the ship, and let's have just the two of us do it. All right. Just two, because I have a feeling that this is going to take quite a bit of power to pull off what we're doing anyway. So I'd rather sit. It, I think the two of us can handle an engineering task. All right. And who was this? The cap? Are you speaking for the captain here? Uh, no, Zach's ah. and uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm playing so many characters this evening. My well, voices yeah. are not. Uh... <laughs> All right. Gate jumper, quit playing with yourself. Yes. <laughs> 
All right. I thought we were memed out. No. <laughs> no, no. We apparently that was just the refresh or recharging of the meme batteries. But let's push through yeah. nonetheless. You have people to save. Damn it. Different right. three. Uh, so Zax, you will assist with control plus engineering. And this is a new Who's, scene, but you have no momentum anyways, so cool. Who's the primary, is it? Uh, the primary is Primrose. Zax is secondary. <clears throat> Zax did good. Primrose. Oh, sorry. Was no. I supposed to... Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> I am so sorry. Primrose. <laughs> Primrose. 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 Yes. Control plus con, please. Control con. You difficulty got three. it, sir. Ooh, boy. Difficulty three. And this is oh, not... Are... Uh, this is a task that is not dependent on, you know, atmospheric things, so... Would this be... require? Would this be a task that requires precision maneuvering, though? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'll let that fly. That's yeah, good. so I get to reduce that by one, so it's a difficulty two. Okay. <laughs> Uh, helm operations would be a focus here. Control, con, 2d20. Yes, I have a focus. And, of course, <laughs> two momentum. There's four hey. successes, two momentum. All right. I mean, it's using parts of the ship that are not designed for this sort of thing. You managed to pull it off rather successfully. Uh, there's a well, jostling and... It. A part of the ship structure creaks as the docking clamps extend and take on more weight than they're probably rated for. But the USS Concordia lands outside a colony. Uh, this close, I will give it to Moore. Uh, Moore, you, can, you count uh, 20 life forms on board on the surface uh, not a lot in the way of functioning power systems or shields um, let's see given the metallurgy de metallurgical decay you suspect that this structure is probably around 80 years old given the amount of re well nope sorry that's my timeline wrong about 120 years old given the amount of radiation damage done to the uh, structure Sir, I'm counting approximately 20 heads. I have very minimal power. Open com. Station, this is the USS Concordia. We are here to rescue you. We are docked outside your habitat. Uh, please make way towards our ship as soon as possible so we can get you out of here. Uh, very low grain um visual image appears uh very similar to uh, something akin to you know 480p on a 1080p screen uh, very primitive visualization technology uh a kasala with a uh, bone white skin uh his eyes are uh, black sclera with a white pupil we are not familiar with the with the USS Concordia or your people. However, if your offer of rescue is genuine, we are certainly going to take it. I already have my partner preparing, uh, preparing the, uh, uh, preparing our citizens for departure. This is going to be our, our last. This is going to be the last burst of our power systems. We're going to have to move fast. Make it quick. We don't have a lot of time. Our tractor beam is not going to hold much longer either to get you on board. So take what you need and get on board. We'll make uh, hellos and introductions as soon as you're on board. Mm -hmm. Concordia out. Uh, so... I'll... Uh, as he shuts off the screen, you can see uh, something hopefully not important spark in the background. Uh, mutters something uh, under his breath and 
Uh, the life signs begin to cluster around uh, the base of this tower. Uh, a, fem a female voice comes or cuts over on a short range radio, uh, basically walkie talkie or comm bead. <laughs> I am Asad Gel. We will be departing in four, three, two, one. Activate shield. And the sh uh, on the power output of the station increases dramatically as your sh as your sensors indicate a shield bubble pop up. Uh, the shield bubble pops up and manages to repel all the uh, water or not all the um, particles, the, <coughs> the angry Togalau particles from its you know keeping them keeping the station dry as it were. It's, but already it's not going to last. Uh, but about halfway between there and here, uh, a bunch of uh, in bunch of Kasala and their four armed radi or environmental suits that have definitely seen better days. Some are literally held together by duct tape. And the can we is, is, can we extend our shields? I'm so glad you asked. So this is going to be a uh, control plus security. And the ship will, so the ship has to assist in this matter, with sure. um, with a structure plus security. Yeah. Difficulty of two. Okay, Concordia nope. does not assist, so it's all up to Legos, or one of the engineers if they want to do that. But probably Legos. Legos. Lagos is the doing control. What did you say? Control security. Control security, please. And defensive systems would work. What's diff what diff difficult? Difficult two. Okay. Um. And you have two momentum. Yeah, as I say, you got the momentum. And yeah, we're gonna I use the momentum. I'll spend some threat to increase the complication range nineteen to twenty. Ah, you would. just thinking you would. Yeah. You would after the ship rolls that. I didn't actually check the ship's number before I said that, so cool. Um, well, I'm rerolling, um, rerolling one of those zeros. All right. <clears throat> okay. I got my two. There's the two successes you need, and a complication from the ship. I don't think anything else is a complication. No, it's not. Uh, so what happens is a... Uh, you guys all watch helpless from your gilded thrones up, up on top of the bridge. As you see 20 uh, figures of various age and mobility uh, run in a... They're running basically like they're trying to escape a downpour. Uh, the young ones have been picked up and are being carried by those that are more able. It's more of a bounding run, considering that there's no gravity on this moon whatsoever. Uh, out of uh, inst out of instinct, Lagos, you uh, cre you extend your shields around them, uh, but in doing so, your shields interfere with their harmonic generator and cause a cascade failure uh, through their power systems. So you see this burger tower; uh, it blows up in a uh, series of small detonations causing their shield to pop and all of the angry Togalau particles to rush in and uh, actually physically attack the USS Concordia. Not to mention on the view screen, cheese and mustard just yeah. spread all over. The yeah, place. condiments all over the place. It's a messy scene. <laughs> it's terrible, terrible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, food inspectors have been notified, you know, all that stuff. So, uh, USS Concordia takes six points of damage or which uh you are scale five so that is mostly negated so you take one damage to your shields so noted yep so noted uh you do lose one power from you know the extent of actually that's a complication so i'll say that you lose two power from it all right y'all we're down to three uh, but the uh uh one of the lower docking bays uh you open up the airlock and all 20 Kasala make it in successfully. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, we'll make a nice little area in the docking bay for them and their 20 people. And, uh, yeah, uh, as soon as we get out of here, I would like to meet with them. Okay. Get out of here as in get out of the system or get out of the planet? Get off the planet before we have any other problems. Well, that's good because, um, where was I going with this train of thought? Oh, yes. Uh, Moore, your calculation shows about 30 minutes until the blue dwarf, the blue sun decides to uh, cook this thing in its radiation trail. Hmm. Uh, sirs, we got 30 minutes. Let's get out of here. Can you uh, start working on that whole uh, uh, regaining power thing that you were talking about earlier? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, All so right. uh, to regain power is going to be a control plus engineering test. Oh. Uh, because that's, you know, how the task is done. Does make sure it makes sense. Yep. Okay. I mean, Moore's shooting for a 13 with that. Yeah. So uh, well, I, I will say that, you know, Moore can assist or Moore can take charge, however you wish. Could we say that I'm reverse engineering it because I'm, like, redistributing people and, you know, turning off non-essential systems? No, that's too much of a stretch. Dang. <laughs> if you had power systems, you know, that'd be an easy bet. Or and, even yeah, logistics would work, but... Zax has got uh, control engineering and power systems, so more right, you assist. <laughs> <laughs> more has been coordinating with Zax the entire time. Aye! Okay, uh, control engineering for you, Mr. Zax, and can be assisted by Mr. Moore. I believe it is a difficulty one task. Ooh. Can I pop my determination for spirit of discovery? <coughs> uh, not on assisting tasks, I believe. Spirit of discovery just gives us three momentum to the pool. Oh. Because power system, the power system regain talent, or the task, we have to spend momentum for each ah. additional thing of power. Right. Okay, sure. So, I've got this! Comes in handy here. Uh, I love that focus. Okay. So, yep, you now have three more momentum. So, all right. And how much momentum do you want to spend? Well, hold on. I need to finish my, oh. my assist test. Aha. So, we get, we get two more momentum off that roll. Mm -hmm. So, we're now at six. I need to now roll a challenge die to see if I get my determination back. Hey, I did. Nice. Um, so we... I'm trying to remember the regain talent off the top of my head. Because we succeed, we immediately get one back. Yeah. And then it's... I mean, if we spend it all, we'd be back to full. Mm -hmm. that, that's going to take all of our momentum. If we spend all of our momentum, we will back, be back at full power. I like it, but uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, I would just—that's the—that's the number side. We when we regained one from the task, we get, went up to four. So it's up to the crew. We can put as much as we want into the. No, I'm fine with that. Anyone else to disagree? Nope, sounds good. Mm, no. Nope. It can be flavored okay. that Moose finished his inspection and started up the warp core. There you go. Works. All right. So we're dumping all of our momentum to regain all of our power. Power. Cool. Okay. So let's get us out of the range of this. But we still need to stay in system because we still have to deal with this Togalau disease. Yes. Which will bring the... Yosef Concordia into the where Dr. Uh, Sulkin believes that the uh, primary source of those are not the right tokens. <laughs> That's what happens when I get my control shift, control copy, control paste done wrong. Not here. Okay. So, while this is going on, uh, Doctor. Yes. While you are busy, yes. 
<laughs> You're not in sick bay right now, fucker. <laughs> he just said doctor. He didn't say which one he was talking to. <laughs> Doctors, while you are busy uh, in sick bay, um, I don't believe the captain actually, you know, told you what was coming. But a couple security officers are bringing in several Kasala. Oh. Um. And how long has this entire process taken in game time? Oh, it's taken. Let's see. From you guys starting work to this, I'd say about six or seven hours. Okay. Um. Is there any role I could have made or something during this time period to see if we've made any progress in cross referencing what I was talking about yeah. earlier to see if we can, you know, diverge a yeah. di not diverge. Uh come up with a different cure uh what you can tr yeah let's try so this is going to be a doozy of a test because you know you're working up against a vulcan with four months prep time here um yeah that difficulty five straight out um yeah yep so let's run a control plus no uh insight medicine mm -hmm. and it will uh because because of the recent power loss and whatnot i will say that the ship's computers are not off sure. available, but you could use Doctor Quiff I, or Krim. Or could I have? Can. Could I have both help me? If you would, uh, if you want to give me a point of threat, I will allow you to do so. Yeah, you can take it. Okay. <laughs> so Quiff, Krim, uh, uh, each of you roll Insight Medicine. Um, if you have Exobiology, Exobotany, or Astromycology, those would be good things to have here and by exo you mean xeno xeno yes i'm sorry xeno <laughs> no worries xenobiology um, xenobotany etc 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 okay so in? uh insight medicine yeah um determination uh this kind of works treat anyone even those who wish you harm because that disease is making togalau wish us harm yeah hmm. <laughs> I'll allow it. Or maybe one that's a little more fitting. There's good in everyone. Find it. Even Vulcans? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, his goodness was purged along with his evilness. That... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so that's two automatic successes. Mm -hmm. um, I will give you two threat for a third die. Hmm. Okay. And... Oddly enough, I might not have a focus that works here. Um, here are my focuses. Tell me if any of them would apply. Okay. Uh, cybernetics, Draven Chess is a definite no. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Emergency medicine, first contact, improvisation, surgery, or my uh, Xeno slash exobiology. Uh, xenobiology would work. I believe I said that would be a possible focus to use. Yes. Okay. Um, so if someone wants to give, uh, Lieutenant Krim and Dr. Quith a role, I believe this would count as activations for both of them. Boom. I don't know if we have to, but Krim did good. Ha! Parent figure. I can ignore that complication. <laughs> <laughs> That's five successes. That is five. That's uh, would somebody like to roll for Quith just to see if we get any Quith. more? Quim, Quith. Quith. We have Krim and Quith. I just yeah, both Quith. are assisting. So. <laughs> yeah, I I can do Quith real quick. Sure. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Has the sheet disappeared on me? Uh, shouldn't be. He should still be. No, I I clicked on it and it, I clicked off the window. Ah. Medicine insight. Let's see. Experimental medicine? Sure. Or focus. That'll work. <laughs> Let oh, go. God. Seven successes. You did not even need to spend your determination now. You've wasted um, it. Could I could I use the two determination not determination, Jesus. Yeah. Uh momentum we get from that to create an advantage. Uh, uh that whatever that whatever death rate might be incurred from whatever cure we're creating mm -hmm. 
is either nullified or very much like lowered, reduced. I would say so. Yes. Let's. Um, so basically, what you've uh, look. So, Doctor Sulkin, as brilliant as as he is, was indeed looking at this as a fungal disease. Um, you know, something that would affect you know crops, vegetation, that sort of thing, and therefore based his cure around that. Whereas instead, the th you've decided to look at this as a neurological disease. As, after all, neurological pathways is the ba basis for sen any form of sentience. Um, so wh what you're, while Dr. Sulkin's, what, while you could not do what you're doing without Dr. Sulkin's work, uh, you are just sort of nudging it in a different direction. Sure. Uh, you believe that there will still be, you know, uh, loss of spores, but you think you've knocked that down to about 1%. So, wait, hold on. Okay. Um, I'm both tired and out of it. Uh, so you said th the death rate would be 1% as compared to 25%? Yes. Well, actually, let's bump that up to five there. That sounds okay. more reasonable. Okay. <laughs> yes. I assume, like, Sulkin has, like, a data pad or something of the sort on him, or, like, a uh, something where I can send him a text message in his quarters. Um, yeah, well, uh, what is Sulkin I mean, doing in his quarters? Meditating. Got candles going, you know, just sitting there, focusing my, uh, preparing for the, uh, eventual death of the, I mean, uh, uh. <laughs> while you're meditating, you receive a, uh, beep that would indicate like a text message of something of the sort that just says four it, months of research, <laughs> four months of research destroyed in six hours and there's you know you get schematics of the new cure that was devised fascinating i will head down to la the lab okay uh, dr sulkin you uh, find that the lab is a very, very popular place at the moment. Uh, there are several, uh, several Kasala. You, are, of course, are quite familiar with Kasala, as they have right. a embassy on the station by this point. Um, and your token, I think I deleted it instead of just because I am a good GM. Okay. And as you walk in, you see Krim. Uh, for Lisa and Quith, all busy treating them for um, various forms of malnutrition to radiation poisoning. Doctor, I got your message. Salutations and congratulations. May I assist you with the treatment of the Kasala? Of course. And I'll get busy. <laughs> yeah, for the... Uh, once you are fig once you figure out, you know, once the general chaos has died down, um, the blue um, Kasala introduces herself as Asad Gel, and she proves to at least, while she might not be a doctor by trade, she d certainly has picked up enough first aid um, talents to uh, assist. Doctors, I'm I'm very I must say I'm very pleased with your ship. Your Federation medicine is quite impressive. We try our best. Yes, you are correct. Although I will tell you there are ships that are much more impressive than this one. I find that and and much bigger. I find that difficult to fathom. <laughs> but I suspect uh, we've been out of contact with our people for so long. Are you aware of 
the are you aware of the state of the Kasala Empire? I'm not sure how much for Lisa knows. <laughs> Doctor of Silken that. does. Silken would, yeah. yeah. The there is actually an embassy on the station I am stationed at. <laughs> yeah. That's as good a place as any. It's, it would be nice to see uh, friendly friendly faces once more. When I return, I will take you with me and bring you to your people. Uh, they both, uh, they clasp their, or they bring their forearms together that, so that they form an X, and they bow their heads. And I will bow back. Before turning back to, inch, you know, getting their colicky babies to actually eat something. Uh, it's probably the one of the few times that you see their mouths actually, without them being all uh, covered in hmm. COVID masks. Uh, they look more... Uh, <laughs> They look more like uh, shark mouths instead of, you know, typical humanoids. Oh. Large, uh, their their mouths sort of go all the way back, or their mouths open up almost all the way back to their jaws, and they have at least two rims of uh, teeth. Their, ex their outer teeth are the carver teeth, and their insider are the molars and crushers. Fast. So one, one would say that the children would be baby sharks. Do, 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 nope, do, do, done. Baby Don't make sharks. that. No, no, nope. nope. done, done. Uh, where's the band button? Um, <laughs> Is one of them named Bruce? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are going to cut to the bridge because the GM is sick of this shit. <laughs> 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 Where we have the, uh, ow, just getting all my tokens in order again. We have Ferliza, Ryan. Uh, we have Ferliza <sighs> Reinhardt, uh, who has pronounced the ship to be as, you know, a few a few uh, things on the micro fractures. The docking arms will require a bit more repair work, considering that they were not designed to take the strain of an entire asteroid, but that's not a high priority at the moment. And you guys are all looking out over the planet's surface as Dr. Sulkin sh walks in with the status of the probe, which is ready to go. Which the adjustments the doctor has performed, it seems that the death rate of the spores will be much greater less it <laughs> will be much less what the doctor is saying is the rate was reduced from 25 percent to about five percent well really about like 4.78 percent but we had to round up yes you may proceed with launching the probe now. Okay. Uh, All right, you heard him. And some more. Uh, this is going to be a combination that I don't think we've ever done before. This is going to be a uh, control plus security assisted with the ship's um, computers plus medicine. Oh, Wait, can we, could, could we say weapons plus medicine? Sure, why not? Weapons, medicine. That sounds even better. <laughs> Weapons plus medicine, so, difficulty of two. More, or is it Lagos? Lagos, sorry, did I say more? No, no I, I did. did more. Uh, yeah. I mean, more, more shooting for a 13 and Lagos a 14. <laughs> well, Dr. Feliza will help you. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is my control security? Hold on. <laughs> my control security is also a 13. <laughs> um... Ship tactical systems or yep. weapons proficiency? I'll let that go, yep. Well, the ship ain't doing anything for us. What's the difficulty? Two. Okay. <clears throat> and hey, hey, Lagos comes through. Lagos, once again, proving why he is the ship's tactical officer. Uh, fires torpedoes precisely as needed. Uh, so what you guys see on screen is a probe not l looking 
very probe-like. Uh, descending as an or a uh, ball of light from the ship down into the turbulent atmosphere of Floret 1. There is a small ex detonation approximately 100 kilometers beneath the uh, planet's atmosphere, which is lost amongst all the other storm clouds and roiling, um, you know, confusion that separates it from there. Uh, however, all uh, for Lisa, you're tied into the ship's medical sensors more. Uh, very similar. Uh, as soon, within approximately three minutes or so, just around that time where you guys are like, well, we may have failed. But nope, um, the angry soup around the planet begins to still. And the pressure that uh, Reinhardt and Lagos are seeing on the ship's uh, on the ship's superstructure and shields begins to lessen. <clears throat> Uh, wide range sensors um, report a very similar thing L much like a rock being thrown into a still pond um, the cure begins to replicate as it is carried from one infected spore to the next granted you know five percent of the spores don't process the cure and are sa saddened and are sadly ha overwhelmed and burnt out leaving small leaving a, a barely visible track of uh, incendiary flame trailing in its wake. Sort of like a, a meandering lightning bolt of flickering embers. But it takes about 20-30 minutes for everything within visual range to uh, stabilize. The angry soup is now, space is still very populated, it's still not going to be a good idea to form a stable warp field around everything, but uh, Moore and Ferliza and Sulkin, uh, you report that the Togalau's life signs are returning to normal. Was the rate about what we talked about earlier, that 5%? Yep. Yep, give or take a couple points, but yep. All right. Uh, and, and I have another support character. Where's Togi? Uh, the turbo lift doors open and Togi walk, uh, walks through. Togi, hello. Captain. This guard. I was going to say, are you going to make me play a fourth character tonight? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this guard has been analyzing life. The gar this garden has been analyzing that garden's life signs from the science lab. This garden requests permission to disembark as this Togal the Togalau garden seems to be infantile and require and requ requires education. I can think of no better educator than myself at this point in time. Are you sure, Togi? Yes. Uh, this garden has learned lots and will come to miss his time on board this Concordia garden. However, the Togalau garden out there is infantile, and until such time it can re-merge with the regular garden, it could very well turn ill once more. Well, I stand up and get up and shake his hands, and I, it's been an honor. And I honestly can't think of a happy father, more of a happy father than I am now. You know, I am. This garden is pleased to have been a son. <laughs> Farewell, all. And with now, that, sorry. until we meet again. You know how to get a hold of us if you need us. <laughs> of course. And with that, he um, heads out into the turbolift doors and sets course for the nearest airlock. Uh, Moore and uh, Reinhardt, the airlock on deck two, section four, opens briefly and closes.
He seems to have disembarked. You okay, Captain? Oh. I'm, I'll be okay. They'll <laughs> definitely be better off with his over 600 years of knowledge. For, for Lizo, seeing the captain somewhat, like, shed a tear, just gives one of those, like, reassuring, like, you know, pats you on the thigh, and just, all right. I like your cut, G! <laughs> what does that phrase mean, Captain? <laughs> Not in character. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Ensign, um, uh... Lieutenant Nix reports, Captain, um, I'm. Our communication systems are being directly interfaced with. It's, the Togalau. They're mimicking. Captain, who are the Bee Gees? <laughs> An old Earth band. They're, oh. quite nice. Oh, because apparently they're playing "Staying Alive." <laughs> You, it's one of those things where you don't see it, but like for Lisa, does like a little tiny kind of like fist pump sort of thing. <laughs> yes, as I say, my 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 teary eyed uh, captain has just got a big grin on his face, and as like, all right, Penrose, uh, take us out of here. On it. Uh, does anyone else have any plot scenes or role play scenes they'd like to do? I'm not sure. Okay. Mm, that's good. Yeah. Cool. Well, then, thank you so much for engaging in my plot. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for playing. And we will be back here next week. Bye bye. Bye.